before before we go to those priorities, I just want to acknowledge the the presence of a representative of CEDA, the funders who have so generously supported the networking activities that have been instrumental in allowing us to arrive at the formation of HomeNet International. Um, with us today and yesterday, we've got Anders Gerden, um, who has very generously given of his time for both sessions, both yesterday and today. So thank you for your presence, Anders, and we hope that you've seen the fruits of the investment that you've made in the networking of home-based workers and the successful launch of HomeNet International yesterday and today. So if I could now hand over to Janvi as our new International Coordinator of HomeNet International, and she will present the proposed priorities and activities of HomeNet International for the period going forward. Thanks, Janvi. Thanks a lot, Jane. And now we have our approved constitution. We have the International Working Committee, and we have a first set of affiliates. So a lot of these priorities and activ activities will change a bit. Uh, however, I just wanted to let everybody know that in the last one year, the working group has worked first to really identify the issues and second, what are the priority activities that we have. We've also taken it back to our regions, have had conversations with our own affiliates and that's how we've put this together. Now, um, we can go to the next slide, Demetria. But just to say, I need to start from the positives. So next Congress, we're gonna start from the positives and not from the issues. But I'll also mention here why we are starting from the issues. You know, despite the diversity that we have, we have across all four regions, which is building up HomeNet International, what we also saw was the fact that the issues are not very different. Actually, the, the thing is in detailing, actually they're different, but overall the issues are very similar. So I'm going to quickly go through, not less than 12 issues, but just quick run through those. The first and foremost is recognition and visibility of home-based workers as workers. The second that we discussed were fair wages. Oh, it's coming differently. Okay. The second is lack of policy and legislation for home-based workers. Very few countries have ratified ILO Convention 177, and even fewer countries have a policy for home-based workers. So this is a big issue for home-based workers. The, the third is fair wages or minimum peace rates, which actually match minimum wages. This is a big issue for um, home workers, especially a part of the loan supply chains. The next issue, yeah, access to regular work. Anybody who's worked with home-based workers also know the fact that the work is extremely irregular, very seasonal, very irregular, and this is a big issue for them. The next one, Demetria, yeah. Lack of social protection. Now, it has always been an issue. They don't have any social protection, insurance, pensions. Um, but, you know, we've also seen more during this pandemic that this has become a major need. And in fact, two, two of the regions are working on a campaign on social protection at this moment. The next issue is access to markets. And this is a big one for own account home-based workers, be it Africa, be it South Asia, Southeast Asia, or Latin America. Um, you know, for them access to markets, of course it means different from different regions, but it is a big issue. The next one is skills upgradation, especially when we talk about high mechanization that's coming in into home-based work. Also, they, there is a need for skills upgradation on using different sort of machines. The next is about around recognition and protection in supply chains, home workers or the peace rate workers, subcontracted workers are at the bottom of the supply chain 
extremely hidden, never recognized, and very poorly paid. Um, the next one is better working conditions. Now, when I say better working conditions, it means different to different regions. But um, say, for example, for Asia, it is access to basic services because home is the workplace. However, for other regions, it's occupational health and safety. The next issue is around um, child care. Now, a lot of people actually think that home-based workers don't require childcare because they work from their own homes. In fact, one of the reasons they work from their home is childcare. But this is a big need for home-based workers, especially to increase productivity. And also that they, a lot of them have mentioned this is the only way they can really work. The next issue is on violence at workplace. Now, this means both domestic violence as well as violence within supply chains. Again, we've heard a lot of cases of violence increasing during the pandemic. We don't have data to prove it, but we've heard quite a bit from these organizations from Latin America to South Asia. And last is that, you know, many of them have complained that, you know, there is no inclusion of home-based workers in the recovery plans, COVID-19 recovery plans. There is, you know, very little mention for informal sector workers, but very little or absolutely neg negligible for uh, home-based workers. Um, when we really looked at all these issues, if we could move to the next slide, Demetria, what we did was we actually, you know, um, put all the activities in four large buckets. The first one being strengthening organizations of home-based workers and building solidarity. The second one being recognition and visibility of home-based workers. The third is improving livelihoods and working conditions. This is a big one and will take us many more years. And um, the fourth is developing HNI governance and operational structures. Let me just go through this a little bit in detail. However, I'm just going to say, I'm going to wrap up on this presentation fairly soon. I'm going to open up for our affiliate delegates to provide the inputs and comments. Let's go to the next slide. Um, we, you know, as HNI, we will be supporting affiliates in the organizing efforts and strengthening the regional organizations. Uh, we talked about having joint celebrations on International Home-Based Workers Day and International Labor Day, uh, capacity building on organizing home-based workers. Now, just to mention, we've already started doing this. And uh, in fact, um, you know, last year we held a few virtual meetings where home-based workers from different countries have come together and discussed the strategies they've used and the organizations have used in organizing home-based workers as unions, cooperatives, producer companies, etc. Uh, the next need, which you know people talked about, we really do need to have exchange visits between affiliates from different regions and build alliance with international trade unions and networks. The next slide, please, Dimitri. Now, recognition and visibility of home-based workers. Yesterday, Marty Ben talked about, you know, the importance of statistics. Ella Ben talked about it. And we've also heard a lot from our own affiliate delegates. Um, we are hoping to partner with Vigo Statistics team. They already have the briefs for four countries in South Asia. And we're hoping to have more briefs especially in other parts of Asia, but also Latin America and Africa. We'd also thought, we'd also discussed about having a campaign on recognition of home-based workers, as well as an ILO Convention 177. Uh, we will be representing on key global platforms and increasing visibility um, through social media, website, Facebook, Twitter, etc. cetera. We'll go to the next slide. Um, under improving livelihoods and working condition, we again have uh, already have a project um, which currently Asian organizations are working together on recognition and protection of home-based workers in supply chain and be working on an advocacy campaign. And we're hoping to see how, how we can you know, really bring in solidarity from, from different regions on this particular issue. Uh, the next is promoting exchanges and partnerships for access to market, documentation of good practice on access to market for home-based workers, 
policy advocacy on social protection and inclusion in economic recovery programs. Next slide, please. Now this, you know, actually in the next one year or so, this is actually going to be one of our priority activities of developing HNI governance and operational structures. Um, we will be organizing the International Working Committee meetings, working on policies and rules for HNI, and raising funds to sustain some of these activities. Um, I'm going to stop here, but also just to say a big word of caution, a lot of these activities will feed into our five-year plan next year when we have a Congress, because this is not something that we can achieve in a year or next. What we are going to focus, however, is you know what Renana Penn had mentioned in the morning to, to really build solidarity uh, between the regions and, and making a very accountable and transparent organization. So I'm going to stop here and uh, people have their hands raised. There are also comments coming in. So I'm going to take those in now. So Vanessa, would you like to prioritize these or? Um, maybe let's take Namrata who has a hand up and then, then we can go to the comments in the chat. Sure, thank you, Vanessa. Namrata Ben. Namaste everybody. And uh, very happy HomeNet International Day today. So uh, uh, thank you, Janvi, for uh, uh, you know listing out the issues, the priorities. Uh, but I think from all the four buckets that you have you know filled in, the first and the last bucket seem to be uh, very important right now. I mean, given the experience that we have been hearing from uh, Renana Ben and from Rakavi and from you know the others who have led international movements, I think the first thing which becomes very important for all of us is organizing. Uh, there are so many affiliates whom we don't know right now. Some are small, some are big, some are going through certain struggles. So. Uh, if you prioritize among the four buckets, I think the first bucket, which is about organizing and keeping our solidarity together, that would become a very important priority. And of course, for that, uh, the other activities can be listed out. And the last bucket that you have mentioned, which is about the governance, you know, making the structure more strong, I think that also becomes a very important priority. I'm not saying that the second and the third bucket it, uh, we should avoid. They are equally important. Oh, well but the experience given from, you know, South Asia, uh, especially, you know, working with HomeNet South Asia uh, in the last few years, uh, and especially seeing the training and the capacity building efforts that we have put in together, uh, this becomes very important because uh, with all the kind of struggles we are going through, I mean, we have heard so many stories today, and we have been hearing them even uh, before keeping everybody together with the same message and uh, strategizing our activities around the home-based workers issues, how to do it, what is the importance of the member-based organizations in which we are part of, that becomes a very important uh, activity for HomeNet International. This is just one, uh, one idea that I have, but uh, of course uh, uh, it's for everybody else to even decide. But if you take my word, I think for the first few years, which is first few when I say for the first two years, that would be very important. And it's lovely to see some old faces, friends, comrades with whom you know we have interacted. Uh, all the best to everybody. And thumbs up, Thank you, Namrata Ben. Thank you, Namrata Ben. Point taken. And we've noted it down. I'm also reading out, um, you know, comments is unpaid care work should also be a priority issue. Uh, point taken there from Patamaba, Lord, this has sent that. And Suntri and Josephine have, have asked us to highlight, we need to also work on convention 190. A lot of us have shown interest. Um, also just a word of caution, you know, HomeNet International will not be replicating a lot of activities with, which are happening regionally. You know, in fact, regions, HomeNet Southeast Asia has existed for 22 years. HomeNet South Asia has existed, existed for 20 years and they have a huge membership themselves and are doing a lot of work around it. 
Um, so we are not there to replicate some of those activities. Those will continue. And HomeNet International will only take some of the key activities at the moment. It, it can be Convention 190 because a lot of regions are also talking about it. Again, noted there, Sunthri and Josephine. Um, I think Betty's hand is up. Uh, then Srishti Ji, Betty's hand was up. Betty, are you there? Thank you, Dave. Um, uh, looking at the priorities that HNI has mentioned that they will start embarking on, I would like to suggest that we should uh, prioritize the issue of COVID-19 crisis and home-based workers. I'm suggesting that HNI should be among champion bodies that are ensuring that there is equitable access of COVID-19 vaccine diagnostics for home-based workers so that we do not have a phenomena where other workers are being vaccinated while home-based workers are waiting behind to be vaccinated. Currently, you find that it's normally the former workers who are able to access diagnostics of COVID-19 and home-based workers are left to survive. So I'm looking at HNI prioritizing equitable access to COVID-19 vaccine. And thank you, uh, thank you. yeah, and I would like to add also that uh, about capacity building, that H HNI to ensure economic security for home-based workers by advocating for policies that promote access to finance and financial inclusion for home-based workers by providing economic security for families so that they don't always fall back into poverty. When you, hear, when you look at financial inclusion in the true sense, it means access to many other forms of financial schemes and services like credit and insurance. So that home best workers move away from only having only bank accounts as a, a financial inclusion entity. So I'm looking at HNI surpassing that and advocating for more financial inclusion with, with other schemes like insurance and credit. Thank you. Again, we're going to take it back and, and have a thorough discussion on all of these, but thanks a lot for providing your inputs. Next up is Swishti Ji from Sabah, Nepal. Um, first of all, congratulations to all for the launch of successful launch of HomeNet International. Um, well, uh, it's exciting to see the work plan. A lot of uh, uh, things that we can take up and I was quite excited to see the exchange visits between affiliates from different regions up there. And uh, we've been, um, you know, uh, we believe in peer learning and best practices. And at this point in time, on behalf of Sabah Nepal and all the Sabah sisters in the region. I think uh, uh, this uh, model, Sabah model is a very replicable one. And I would uh, request HomeNet International to you know, um, facilitate exchanges between us and other regions of the world. Uh, that's one. And until and unless uh, uh, we are again ready to travel physically, uh, there's another thing that I would like to request here is the capacity building of uh, uh, cooperative and enterprises like us uh, for uh, online marketing because uh, till all of us get vaccine and uh, you know we are able to travel again till then this virtual uh, world will be active I'm sure and uh, we would want to be really connected and our you know products to be marketed too so thank you and Manali Pen next oh thanks uh, Janvi Ben and thank you for uh, the interesting uh, presentation on priorities. So I think uh, our vision should be big, yeah. but we should not be very ambitious. And uh, for, for, for two, three years, uh, we should create the solidarity between the countries, and region and between the organization. So that is my first point. Secondly, uh, 
we should uh, interact with uh, each other more and and to understand and and the lastly to understand the work of other uh, uh, other affiliates we should have exchange visit uh, uh, between affiliates and this will give new ideas new learnings and also the solidarity and this will build uh, home net international most strong thank you i am going to go to dinusha ji who is from sabah sri lanka dinusha ji yeah uh, can you hear me yes yes we can yeah actually i propose that uh, if you can uh, have a award ceremony to find out the best home based workers in region or whatever in ground level so then we can uh, have a more recognition and we can encourage them to celebrate their performance so that's my point uh, that why uh, i suggest from my way we'll come back to the comments because now i see more uh, hands up i can see jackson from brazil is that correct olá tudo bem a todos olá primeiro eu quero parabenizar pelo i i would like to thank you for the work the, for the marvelous work you are doing we're really happy because we are really focused on our purpose which is to show the visibility of uh, home based workers we are people that we are sometimes not visible but we are there paying our taxes as all other citizens and i would like to say that it was a really good congress a really nice congress it's at peter it was not uh, a physical congress because i think that the human warm helps but um we have our solidarity and this virtual world is distant from the people but it allows us to be present here we are really happy when we see that we are uh, we are empowering ourselves we cannot lose that power you are warriors and you deserve all our respect and i would like to thank everybody who work building this uh, this organization we are really going to struggle so that our rights are acknowledged Thank you. I would like to hug you all and uh, God bless you. Thank you Jackson and we we still continue to hope we will have a physical congress next year when we can all meet each other in person. Thank you. And uh Kazi Baby ji has a hand up. She's from Coalition of Urban Poor in Bangladesh. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. and uh, i know this is very initial stage now for home net international uh, but uh, you have already mentioned many activities for the home based worker but i just wanted to know do you have any plan this for the home based from your side or from international side do you have any plan this year because you know the covid situation and also the uh, uh, not face to face any meeting able to do but uh, do you have any plan so this is my question thank you so what is a plan for this year is that what you are asking kazi baby yeah. ji we are working on it we are working I, on it we are as nascent right as question. we yeah we going to be officially launched only today uh, we are working on this however the way we mentioned our priority this year will be you know what a lot of our delegates have mentioned to build solidarity understanding each other and working on a few campaigns but also setting up of home net international uh i see tatiana's hand and then i'm going to take one more comment and that's it so tatiana si sí, buenas saludos a todas y todes greetings to all i wanted to acknowledge something clarify an issue as regards the universal basic wage 
we've spoken about this. We need to know how to calculate the minimum wage that is required by a home-based worker so that they can survive. This should be ensured by the governments. It's super important that after COVID, this arises as a priority demand. A minimum universal wage that should be established. There should be a universal social security as well established by each region. We should uh, address both, but at least we should uh, succeed in uh, accessing retirement and health. This should be guaranteed ensured by governments. This was the point I wanted to, to make, which uh, I don't know if uh, you understood what I meant, but uh, this is what I meant in the chat. Right. Tatiana, thank you for explaining that. Um, you know, you're right about the fact that, you know, we, a lot, this has been demanded, you know, by everybody, minimum wages. Many countries have it, many countries don't, but there is a big advocacy campaign also happening around the way we, and there is, there are a few trainings we've done in South Asia, which is how do you calculate your peace rates? to match the minimum wage uh, prescribed by the country. So, you know, we could talk about this a lot more, but thank you for raising this. And universal social protection is, is something which all the regions are talking about. So we definitely do need to work on that issue. Um, I'm just going to take a last comment, which has come from Sonia George. It says, building up the leadership of home-based workers is very important. IDWF shows us a great model. As Renanaben said clearly, organizing home-based workers is not easy. All right. So, um, Vanessa, do we have time or can we just now wrap up? And thank you for all the inputs and discussions. And um, yeah, just to say it's very ambitious. It's going to lead up to a five-year plan. We need to start small, take baby steps, and actually look at building solidarity between regions, but also pick up some of the issues which are the burning issues for home-based workers across all regions. So thank you, everybody. And over to you, Jane. Thank you. Mm -hmm.